Hello, and welcome to the Be Blue Renegade podcast. My name is Molly, also known as the Be Blue Renegade. Um, and today is Monday, December 30th, um, 2013. So, um, we are sitting in my living room today. So, wonderful, right, guys? Um, and I actually have a lot to show you guys this week. Um, I am downstairs this week, mostly because... Um, Dear Sue Lumpel one and I decided to refinish the floor um, that goes to um, the yard room upstairs, which means that um, we shouldn't be walking on it that much. <laughs> um, and I had to quick grab some things that were actually hiding out in the room that I wanted to show you this week. So I had tried recording earlier today, but because I had forgotten those things, it was like, well, you know what, back up this again so now it's closer to sunset um and hopefully the lighting's okay i have the light on overhead so it looks like things are coming in pretty good so yeah um so to start um i will show you knitting i only have one work in progress right now i know i said i was going to cast on two things last week didn't <laughs> um but I'm actually in the process of casting off my Walk on the Moon. So this is Walk on the Moon by Arlene's World of Lace. Isn't this a beast? This is going to be a truly massive shawl. Um, and I'm knitting this out of my Wool Mice and Lace. <laughs> oh, I'm back. Um, uh, today is my mom's birthday. And so I had called her before recording and left her a message. So she called me back. So I'm back. Hey. Okay. Where did I leave off? Walk on the moon. I am binding off. Do, 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 do. So oh, this is probably actually, I'm getting to the point where you can see the full pattern now. Um, and obviously this will be finished object next week, but um, I was thinking about increasing the ruffle and then I decided to not increase the ruffle because I think I want to knit another one of these with different colors, obviously. <laughs> so I realized that I needed to conserve my yarn because I was not going to have um, enough to do that otherwise. So it's coming along. Um, the main driver for why I have not started the sweater was because I needed my size 3 needles to swatch, which meant that I had to really get on finishing this stupid thing. Um, and I'm really happy with how it turned out. It's, it's pretty dark, um, and that's actually pretty true colors there. So I still have probably another two-thirds to go before... I'm, or probably another two thirds to go before I'm done binding off. So that'll be a project for movie night tonight. Um, and that it's perfectly wonderful. Um, what will be going on the needles soon is um, my Hallelea, um, which is by Mel um, of Single Handed Knits. And the yarn is um, the Mustache Hellebus game in the Milana colorway. It's coming out really gray on my screen, but hey! Um, so this is 1,500 yards of a light fingering. Um, it's whatever it comes in weight-wise between um, the Wool Mysa 100% and the Wool Mysa Lace. And I had pulled up a picture of the pattern so I could show you guys. So. Let's see. There we go. So that is what it will look like when it's done. So it, it's a v-neck with buttons and three-quarter sleeves um, with a little bit of a lace detail and the swatch is intense. Um, <laughs> you've always, you've always got to watch out for when the swatch says cast on 50. <laughs> um, 
but the idea behind it is to practice doing all of the things that you're going to be doing on the sweater. So there'll be some fun hold time and some decrease for the shoulder area and all that other fun stuff. So, um, and it's something where you need to get your row gauge and your stitch gauge on somehow because of how it's constructed. I haven't read the pattern all the way through yet, so it'll be a surprise. But the knit along started December 26th. Um, I think today was the day when they were going to be starting the back. Um, so I'm a little bit behind, but I am not too worried about catching up. And it's cold again. So, oh, this is just full of craziness, isn't it? Okay. So, um, I had mentioned it in the show notes last week, but this, um, is the yarn I ended up picking for my new and improved mitts. This is um, handmaiden yarn in the um, Caspa base, and it is, um, I believe the colorway is blackberry. I don't remember. But this is the color. <laughs> oh, big stretch. So it's really quite, quite gorgeous. So. Um, pinks, purples, dark purples, um, and I'm going to be knitting the same pattern that I had knit before for my fingerless gloves, but I will be doing the, um, oh, what is it? Instead of doing yarn over increases in the Pimeda's pattern, I'm going to be doing make one increases to keep everything nice and tight and not so airy, because my, my gloves were about ready to fall apart when I had lost them. And the bars from the yarn over increase were, um, what is it? The bars from the yarn over increase were the places that were going to wear out and fray. So, get that taken care of. Um, and because it's cold and I was out running errands today, and I was definitely missing my mitts. So, those will be going on the needles soon. Um, because my hands are cold. <laughs> Um, all right, what's next? So, um, I am nearly done with the spinning project, but not quite. <laughs> um, crinkle, crinkle, crinkle. Um, so I am working on, um, spinning two braids of fiber for my mother-in-law. Um, I had made her an offer before she left for Rhinebeck to spin fiber for her. Um, and um, basically just as sort of a dare to myself, um, I was trying to see if I could spin it while I was there, which at some point I gave up on that, but whatever. So I am currently plying. It took me two days for um, the first two ounces and two days for the second two ounces. And I've been sort of lackadaisically applying them together. Um, what I ended up doing to, so this is, um, this is, um, fiber optic in a one of a kind or in a once in a lifetime colorway, which was different shades of blue. So going from a navy to, um, a royal. Um, and what I ended up doing to spin this is that I split the braid in half, and then I split the other half into thirds. So this is technically speaking a fractal spin, but because the colors are so similar, um, it really does look more like a semi-solid being plied up. Um, and I'd say it's coming in somewhere between a fingering and a sport in the plying. Um, let's see. And I still have a decent way to go still on the plying. I don't prefer to ply on this spindle because it isn't heavy enough to do the four full ounces, but I'm just going to deal with it anyway. So this is what I have left to ply. Um, you can see the this bottom one is the one that was spun straight through, and this top one is the one that I split up. So you can see the lighter blue in the very center of that. Um, so it's, it's coming together. I'm 
enjoying the spinning of it. Um, it will be going in the mail back to her once I finish. But I also, um, what is it? So um, tomorrow will be the last day of 2013, which means that podcasters near and far will be coming up with crazy ideas <laughs> for for what what they should um, or what their intentions are. <laughs> um, and um, I'm a part of the um, completely twisted and arbitrary group, and. Um, one of the challenges they decided to have for 2014 was something called um, Spin the Fin. So, um, so that th this was, whatever, interesting to me. Um, I know that there are a couple of projects that, that I had wanted to knock out, um, whatever, more recently. And because when I went to see my mother-in-law, she was like, oh, um, fiber. So... So the, what is it, so this Pullworth um, from, or the, this Pullworth from Fiber Optic is going back to her, it's not staying with me. And this one I started spinning too soon, so it will not count towards my spin the bin. But she got me two braids of Fiber Optic. So this is um, the other braid. So this one is the, this is a gradient. This is the indigo to emerald gradient here. And it is an 80-20 merino silk. Um, and this is gonna be a lot of fun to spin. I'm planning on spinning it thin and I'm planning on not applying it. Um, and it's gonna be really, really quite wonderful. Um, What's probably special for these gradients is that um, last year um, I had my Indi or I had my cerulean rouge violet, um, which was from the Knit Girls Spin Along, and um, that was the braid of fiber where I learned how to draft. <laughs> so, um, so I'm really excited to be able to spin an entire braid. Um, of this fiber because I actually understand spinning now and <laughs> um, I think it'll be a lot of fun. So I don't think that that one's going to be the next one though. The next one, which, well, you guys have been hearing about this for a long time, is um, my final three ounces of the, um, what is it? So the July to September spin along from the Completely Twisted Arbitrary. So this is the Let's Go Crazy, the Fat Cat Knits BFL. Because um, I do want, so that this is going on next, the braid, the gradient braid is going to go on after, um, on whatever, my, my pretty spindle. And then the other thing that I put in my bin is the chocolate shell of things. And this is the unwash, unprep stuff. Um, sometime in the next two weeks, my plan is to go through, remove the hay, um, and wash the um, remainder of the fleece. Um, which hopefully will bring down the weight of it to a more reasonable amount. Um, thankfully, um, on Saturday, we ended up getting all of the rest of my boxes. So um, in one of my boxes was all of the um, fleece that I had done. The, the roll logs are a bit compacted. Hopefully, I'll still be able to spin the stuff I, I've already prepped. Um, and I still have um, some more roll logs that I need to do with the clean stuff, but I figure it's a bad idea to have dirty fleece lying around because that um, opens you up to moths and that's something that I don't want. <laughs> so I really do need to get on cleaning it and getting all the hay out and the gross and whatever else. Um, so that, so those three things are in my bin. And hopefully no one really cares, but because it is um, 
which should end up being 32 ounces of spinning. Um, I said that my third entry was entries 3 through 12. <laughs> you could break it up into two ounce segments. So bin item number one is the fat cat knits, bin number two is the fiber optic gradient, and then the rest of my crazy pants challenge is this sweater spin, um, which should be an Aaron weight cable ply um, semi woolen guy. So I figured that that was the best way to motivate me to get into this. You could do an option where, um, what is it, the use it or lose it, so then any braids that you did not get around to spinning um, would go up for prizes, but honestly, um, it doesn't really make sense for me because one of my braids doesn't belong to me. <laughs> um, the other one is very important if I am to spin socks. <laughs> Or spin for a pair of socks would be sort of lame to only have one sock. <laughs> and um, I don't think anyone is going to want my my Shetland fleece. <laughs> so, so it, it's slightly crazy. I hope you guys, um, and that's really the only expectations that I put on myself for 2014, um, is like, I really do need to get a move on on the sweater spin. Um, because it's a big project, it's going to take some time, it's not like it's the sexiest project in the world, but I think I'm really going to like the finished product and it's going to be really special, so it's just a matter of you need to do the work. Um, so I'm hoping that that motivates me there. I don't really have any expectations for myself in terms of, in, in whatever, knitting wise. Um, on New Year's Day, I'll probably pull out the stash and get everything prettified and all that other fun stuff. <laughs> but, um, because, um, I also take part in the flasher stash, so then I put it all out, I arrange it in a rainbow, and I take pictures, because that's a lot of fun to do. And then it gives me a chance to go through all my yarn and figure out what it is that I have and what I don't have. And it doesn't take too long, because you guys saw my stash last week. It's not ridiculous. <laughs> I, I'm not afraid to show you guys. <laughs> um, so so that that's sort of what I'm looking forward to um, spinning-wise, and looking forward to the new year. Who knows how much time I'm going to have. Um, I'm going to be pretty busy um, starting the 13th of January, and I'm not... If last year was any indication of um, how much work is going to be, it's going to it's going to be a lot of work. Um, looking whatever um, from January to May, so we'll see. I'm doing the the teaching assistant thing, and I'm taking two classes and a seminar. So hopefully everything comes together. But what can you do? I'm going to have to make it work. And now, to the last part of the show, um, I get to talk about the, well, okay, so spinning's over. I need to show something quite ridiculous, and then I can go into sketch positions. So while we were staying at my in-laws, um, last year, um, my mother-in-law ended up receiving a loom that had belonged to her grandmother. Um, and because I didn't really have a lot of stuff going on, I had double checked with her and asked if I could get it working. Um, it's because I was just sitting unused um, in whatever my husband's bedroom. So, let me quick grab it. Okay, it has a couple of other things on it which I will be showing later. So, this is, um, whatever, my great-grandmother-in-law's loom. Um, it is, um, a two-harness, um, loom with an attachment to make it into a four-harness loom with foot pedals and the whole dealio, and that's all upstairs. It wasn't really worth bringing it down. Um, and it took a little bit to figure out how to get all of the pieces in the right spot, but I'm an engineer, and um, 
Thank you, Flickr, for having a picture of this limb actually in use, because it made it a lot easier to figure out what's going on. So, um, this um, dates to sometime between, um, what is it, the 1940s and the 1970s. Um, it is um, The Little Loom by Lou Tate. And it is, um, and then Lou Tate's, um, I guess her, like, business or whatever, or where she taught weaving was from the Little Loom House in Louisville, Kentucky. The Little Loom House still exists. Um, they, they still use these looms. Um, Lou Tate turned out to be really instrumental in writing down the drafts for weaving patterns, which were native to Kentucky, so she went all around and learned about what Kentucky weavers are doing. Um, and a draft is a pattern for weaving. So, um, my mother-in-law let me use her warm mesa <laughs> to um, create the warp. Um, in this particular project, the warp is Stella Polaris, which is my favorite Wolmisa colorway. And then the weft is blue Kernicau, which is the same colorway that I used to knit my alfalfa sweater. So, ta-da! So the dealio is with this guy that um, you have this little handle here which moves the two bits of yarn or whatever, the two halves relative to each other. You have a reed which you use to press down on the fabric and then it also sets how many threads per inch your fabric's going to be. I believe that this is, um, what is it? This is, I believe, 15 threads per inch. Um, and um, this is my first real weaving project. Um, I'm only borrowing this loom, so I will probably be returning to it to her in the summer, but I'm hoping to do at least one more project on it before I return it to her. Um, it took two solid days to figure everything out, and then, um, well, like at some time in the afternoon, Christmas Eve, or Christmas Day, we went to figure out how to get the work on. Um, and then it basically took most of the day on the 26th to get everything threaded correctly. And then on the 27th, um, fix all of the things that I did wrong. I actually was starting to weave on that on, on the 26th, <laughs> but it was all sorts of screwed up. Um, because I really couldn't find very much information on how to do a two harness. So this type of loom today would probably be a rigid heddle design. So that would be a case where the reed and the heddles, which are these metal things back here, are um, combined into one thing. So then with a rigid heddle loom, you move it up to um, that only one of these is threaded at a time. Only one of these is threaded and then you move it up and you move it up to do to pass the shuttle through one way and you move it down to pass the shuttle through the other way. Whereas this one, um, there's a neutral position where both parts of the warp are even with each other and then you pull up or down to move it around. And actually my shuttle is hiding over here which is preventing it from moving. So this is the shuttle that I'm using um, and it's shedding a lot and I don't know if that was the case where because I had had it set up incorrectly that's what it was doing or what but who knows. Um, and I've probably done maybe two of the seven feet that I was intending to do. So um, so it's coming together. It's gonna, I don't know if you guys can really see the stripiness of the fabric, um, but uh, yeah, it's sort of hard to tell right now what you guys can see exactly. But, but once I got everything started, it's been going really, really quickly. Um, it's been living upstairs for now, so that's why it hasn't seen a lot of, excuse me, a lot of work since I got back, but 
look in this space for a little bit more reading. Um, but I'm really glad that um, when we ended up cutting off the project that was on it, the newspapers were from 1951, <laughs> and they were from Louisville. <laughs> so the Dear Sue Lovable one thinks that they were probably reusing the newspapers, but I was thinking that this thing hadn't been used for 60 years, so it, it deserved its time in the sun, I think. So that is whatever the, the new exciting thing which ended up taking up a pretty large chunk of my knitting time in the past week. So, oh, and here's like a side view of what's going on. So, it's, um, it has about 15 and a half inches of weaving space, um, which is may maybe a bit of a hybrid from what you would normally see. Often you see like a 20, a 24, a 12, things like, or 16, I don't know, I guess there are a lot of different sizes, but this one was definitely 15 and a half inches. Um, but I guess it's not too much bigger than that. It's fairly square. Um, and what I'm probably going to have to do in order to do a four harness project is I'm going to have to go through and sand all of the other um, pedal pieces. Um, the heddles are actually, they thread through a metal bar on top and bottom, which means, um, and unfortunately, the project that was on it was cotton, so it ended up taking in moisture and then evaporating off moisture. So everywhere the cotton touched, it's a little bit rusty, um, which, well, I've been sitting in a barn for 60 years, so... Um, so I, I'll, I'll have to sand that because I don't really want to put yarn over rusty metal, iron, whatever. Whatever it is, it, um, so until I get that done, I won't be able to try doing a four harness thing. But I think it's the case where you can do a lot more with four harness. Um, and it will be an interesting puzzle to figure out how to set it up as a four harness loom anyways. Um, I think it's something where you end up needing two feet in order to weave with it. Is it has foot pedals? I don't know. I figure it won't be too bad to figure out in the end. So maybe I'll do a table runner or a scarf or something. I'm not sure. Um, or use up um, my hand spun lace weight that I have no clue what to do with. <laughs> so that is the story there. And now we're into stash positions. Um, yeah, oh, I guess this episode isn't too ridiculously long at this point, but let's see. Where were those? There we go. So, um, as usual, um, I ended up participating in the Wool Mice for All Seasons swap. Um, and so this is a Christmas swap, so then everyone opens their package on Christmas Day. Um, and so I had gotten a variety of lovely treats. So I had macaroons and cocoa covered almonds and soap wash and um, my favorite coffee mug. <laughs> um, I had broken my favorite coffee mug in Albuquerque and like I had whacked it off the counter and then it shattered into a bajillion pieces. Um, but my swap partner <laughs> found one after looking 20 different places. <laughs> um, and what was also a part of it was these snag-free stitch markers. So that was really exciting because I'm definitely running low on stitch markers at this point. So then they have a pretty good size bead um, and then the metal thing. So they, these work really, really great. So I'm really excited to have those. Um, and then I also got, as a part of the swap, so I had swapped away um, my Dunkel Kirsch and in return, I got a skein of Dora. So this, I'd say this is probably fairly color true. So this is um, twin, and it is, um, what would you say? It is um, a, pr a pretty deep blue color with, um, I'd say, um, bits of like a darker navy in it as well. So this will be a really, really gorgeous pair of socks. Um, 
And the story is that two years ago, um, I had gotten my mother-in-law as a swap partner, and I happened to have a box from Australia. So I put all of her packaging in this box from Australia and then left it on the doorstep. And she thought she had totally got a package from Australia. And then after she'd opened everything up, like, surprise! <laughs> and then told her how we were all in on tricking her into thinking that she got a swap package from Australia. So this time, my mother-in-law got me. So she had this ridiculous box, like ridiculous, like two foot by two foot monstrosity that was bright pink with a maroon bow. And there was no note at all in it. So it was the case where I like go through the box and I'm like, hmm, Ohio coffee. And I'm like, but I didn't say anything. And then I, I looked around for the note and she's like, gotcha. <laughs> So we got to have each other, and she she made a really wonderful package. So yay! So th those were the. Um, and she also gave me an interesting tool. So this, or actually, let me move this around. So this is a circuit counter, and it is a way of keeping track of patterns or having a counter that works for patterns that have that dreaded at the same time. So it's something where you take the hands and you'll put it to the repeat, for example, three, and say you have something that repeats every seven stitches and something that repeats every 18, for example. Then what you'll do is as you're moving your counter through, you'll move all of the dials and then every row you'll do that until you come across the row where you have to do something. So, and then once you get to that, then you reset um, whatever dial that is, and then you can continue counting. So it's not, it's not like a traditional counter where you have, for example, 160 rows or something in a pattern, and then you have the dial thing, which goes from 0 to 160, or 1 to 160 probably. Um, so this is a way of doing things where you have these periodic repeats and so especially useful for like cable patterns um, because I just have a dreadful time keeping track of how many rows I've done with cable patterns. So I'm, I'm really excited to be able to use this. I'm not, I don't have any projects on the horizon right now to do. Um, and let's see, this is, um, this is by Grello and Gray. So if you guys are interested in having something like that. And then you can stick it hanging off your needle. It's actually pretty light. Um, the only thing you have to be careful about is it has many instructions about keeping out of direct sunlight. So um, be careful. Um, it's the type of plastic. Um, it doesn't really do well with this table. Um, and then, oh, the blending continues. So this, is another skein of Fulmisa in the twin, and this is um, Hoochie Mama. And this is a name skein, and it's the medium weight. So it is, um, let's see, so it has black, purple, maroon, and blue. Um, and it is a lot of fun. I, I love multi skeins, um, but I have a hard time getting them. So um, it's really very bright and very happy. So, so she she didn't like it, so she gave it to me. So yeah, um, another multi skein for the stash. Um, and then this year um, I got a few Christmas presents. Um, um, my um, family did a gift exchange, and so in order to help make the gift exchange easier, I made an Amazon wish list, and I just put a bunch of books that I was interested in getting on there um, and then sent it off to my brother and so that he he picked a couple of books from the list um, and then my husband was like oh what am I gonna do so I pointed him to the Amazon wish list and so then he got me two books from there as well uh, so many books <laughs> so this is what I got Ta -da! So, I got the Knitter's Curiosity Cam Cabinet by Hunter Hammerson. Um, 
and this is um, this is the one which is um, the um, she has done a series of these this is the first one in this series and it is all based on plants so all of the patterns in this book have a certain um, leaf flower very organic look to them um, and it's half socks and half other stuff um, and I am probably more interested in the socks side of things but really cool and exciting um, I also got another book on socks I got pop art socks um, which is by Stephanie Vanderlinden and let's see if I can quick click to the one I wanted to do it turned out that my little brother had given me this um, but I had seen a pair of these socks online and then I showed them to the dear sweet lovely one and he wanted them too so I will probably be doing so this is the Moritz socks and what's really cool about this pattern is it's a lizard pattern but it's also a tessellation so these are probably going to be going on the needles soon um, and sock knitters were having a two color cow coming up for January and February and I think that these would be a really cool one to do um, so yeah um, I would say that yellow and brown doesn't really do the pattern justice um, I saw it in blue and white and that looked really awesome okay so the other two books that I got were actually from two women that I had taken classes with at Woke Knitting Live in Chicago. So this one here is um, Deborah Newton, um, and the book is Finishing School. So this is a reference book on how to finish sweaters and other sorts of things. So it has a lot of step-by-step -step instructions and tutorials and ideas on alternative ways to finish garments. So, um, so that this is going to be a really handy reference for when I don't know what to do, I can open this up and look, and it'll be really awesome. And this one here is um, from Sally Melville. Um, so this has, so this is Mother Daughter Knits, um, and it has a variety of different patterns in it. I'm, I'm more interested in the sweater patterns. Um, and um, I would say, in particular, I can quickly find it. I would say the two to, that stood out to me was this one, which is um, a really classy fitted hoodie. Um, what's the name of that pattern? It is the sophisticated hoodie. And what is the other one? Oh, there's probably. This one is really very striking as well. This is the mini dress. I probably wouldn't make it that long, but it has a very interesting construction and the way the colors go together to give a very flattering silhouette, which is pretty cool. And let's see. At some point I'll find this. I completely neglected to, there we go. The other one I was interested in was the gray cardigan. So this is one that um, I saw in the class with Sally Melville. Um, I took the fit to flatter class with her and it just has some really nice lines um, and I do really want to make a gray cardigan <laughs> because it will go with everything. So, so th those were the three patterns that really stood out to me in the book so there we go and the last one is a book I'm never going to read but a book that I will look up very often and this is The Principles of Man. Um, and a lot of people have gone at length about um, this book um, it is a reference book that has all or it has pretty much every single knitting technique there is and then descriptions and instructions and how to do this and alternatives and all this other 
fun stuff. So it's just the case where it is um, a really, really ha handy reference book. So because um, I don't really have much in the way of reference books, so that's most of the stuff that I put on my Amazon wish list. And this is a gift from my husband, so yay! Um, and I'm hoping that this will um, come in handy when I come across something that I'm not sure on how to do. Um, I don't know. So for example, we have chapter 8, which is openings, and it's showing a or showing at least on this four different ways of making a buttonhole. So that would be the case where um, oftentimes I don't want to do things the way they're written in a pattern. And this is a wonderful tool to have to figure out how to do something differently and how to do something better than how it was written in the pattern. So that is the story there. So I'm really excited about the books that I get. Um, and that is all that I have for stash positions, which is pretty long. <laughs> Yep. Well, not too long. It wasn't too bad. It was only like 10 minutes. <laughs> um, let's see. I will be recording next week uh, in 2014. Ooh. And I'm not really sure what day. Um, my husband goes back to work Thursday, so who knows when I'll decide to do something. Um, I'll probably actually be painting this room a bright sunny yellow in well, a buttery yellow instead of the dark brown that it is now. Because it doesn't really go with the wood. Can you see? The wood, the brown, there we go, wrong side. The wood, the brown, they don't really match. Um, and it's a really dark color, so we're hoping to brighten up the room and make it look a lot um, bigger and more open. So, we'll see how that goes. Um, and yeah. So, what would it be? Let's say I'll be recording next Monday and what date is next Monday we'll see I could probably do this by math but <laughs> we'll just not I don't need to think I'm on vacation <laughs> um there we go calendar January and then we go to 2014. So I will record again on the 6th. Um, yeah. So, so many days. So that is a story there and I hope everyone has a really lucky week and I'll see you on the 6th. So take care guys. Bye-bye.